best-selling book of the century. It's the Bible. Here's a poem titled Best Seller. It is worn where fond hands have caressed it and dog-eared where hearts found new ease. Ah, no, it is not just a book of the months. It's the book of the centuries. There are tears where a soul shared its sorrow and smiles where it lightened a load. There are faint names of dearly departed who cherished it so on life's road. I turn to it when I am happy and it doubles the joy of the day. I lean on it when I am troubled and its leaves blow my cares all away. For its tale is as new as tomorrow. Every land knows the story divine of this quiet, eternal bestseller. Dear little old Bible of mine. I don't know how your mother-in-law is or was, but I had a wonderful mother-in-law. I used to call her Maggie. This poem is dedicated to all mother-in-laws. It is called A Mother-in-Law's Prayer. Teach me to speak or hold my tongue when silence is divine. Help me, I pray, to understand this newfound child of mine. Keep me from taking bitter sides or feeding angry flames. Help me to let them both alone like children at their games. Counsel me when to call on them and when to say goodbye. Instruct my heart to love them both, nor ask the reason why. Teach me to be a friend in need, whose smile they're glad to share. Never too near, yet never too far. This is my humble prayer. You know, I'm one of those hand-packed husbands that have to go to the supermarket and drag home big bags full of supplies. And watching the women running around in the supermarkets gave me an idea. So here's a little poem titled, Life's Supermarket. Life is like a supermarket. Everything is on the shelf. You can gather smiles or teardrops. All you do is help yourself. You'll find loyalty and kindness, greed and love, romance and hate, each one marked and priced so plainly. Purchase wisely. It's your fate. Take your time. Avoid bad bargains as you go along the way. Remember, when you leave life's market, 
for each item you must pay. You know, a good dog is a great lesson. He has the kind of faith in his master that his master should have in the great master. Dog. A faithful dog will play with you and laugh with you or cry. He'll gladly starve to stay with you, nor ever reason why. And when you're feeling out of sorts, somehow he'll understand. He'll watch you with his shining eyes and try to lick your hand. His blind, implicit faith in you is matched by his great love, the kind that all of us should have in our master, up above. When everything is said and done, I guess this isn't odd. For when you spell dog backwards, you will get the name of God. all take that miracle road with Joseph and Mary. This poem is called Miracle Road. How many miles to Bethlehem? Dusty and long was the road as the little donkey stumbled along bearing his precious load. How many miles to Bethlehem? A blind man wept at their plight and was blind no more. Then with tears of joy he followed the star so bright. How many miles to Bethlehem? The onlookers' hearts beat fast, watching the sick and the lame made whole, where Joseph and Mary passed. How many miles to Bethlehem? It isn't so very far, for Christ is reborn in each human heart that follows the Christmas star. What would you do? What would you wish for if somebody gave you three wishes? This poem is three wishes. I wish I had a telescope to scan the starry skies. But since I have no telescope, I'm glad I've got two eyes. I wish I had a kitchen run by push button commands. But while that kitchen's still a dream, I'm glad I've got two hands. I wish I had a supercar to give my friends a treat. But till that new car comes along, I'm glad I've got two feet. Two eyes to look to God above. Two hands to clasp in prayer. Two feet to carry me to church. Why, I am a millionaire. You know, prayers are very much like precious water. Water that we never miss till the well runs dry. Then we pump like mad. This poem is Rainy Day Prayers. Most of us pray when we are scared or need his help real bad. But somehow we never get to thank the Lord when we are glad. Most of us never pray at all when things are going right. Only pessimists think of a rainy day when the sun is shining bright. Suddenly then the hard times come and we pray with uplifted hands. Rainy day prayers 
to a patient God. And somehow, he understands. man once said, critics know the price of everything and the real value of nothing. And after all, is fame and fortune worth the hearts you must break to achieve it? Real values. Are you trying to make a million? Is a fortune your only aim? Do you search like a ghost from pillar to post? for the will-o'-the-wisp called fame? Calm down and relax for a moment. I hear that the fishing is fine and God's buttercup spills all over the hills with gold that is yours and mine. Let somebody else make that million. Fool's gold that one never spends. How much richer to leave a bounty of love in the hearts of a million friends. I guess we all have wonderful mothers, and mine was one of the most wonderful that ever lived. She inspired this poem, Come In Children. Out of my distant childhood, kindled by memory's spark, once again I hear mother saying, Come in, children, it's getting dark. Like young birds hurrying nestward to the wing of the mother lark, we would heed the summons so tender. Come in, children, it's getting dark. And I pray, when life's road is ended, to the same sweet voice we will hark, calling to us out of heaven. Come in, children. It's getting dark. the most precious thing in this world I think it's peace of mind and that's the title of this poem peace of mind I went to see a wise old man and he was very kind what is life's sweetest gift I asked he answered peace of mind when I met a great physician I was quite surprised to find that he thought the finest medicine was simply peace of mind. And so I passed this on to friends who would leave all gloom behind. The key to life's great mystery is simply peace of mind. Right after Christmas is when the house is usually littered with scattered toys. And that's the name of this poem, Scattered Toys. He never puts his toys away, just leaves them scattered where they lay. I try to scold him and I say, you make me mad. But when to bed he has to race, the toys he left about the place remind me of his shining face and make me glad. Upstairs I hear him praying, God bless mother, God bless dad. And in my heart I'm saying, bless you too, my little lad.
When he grows up and gathers poise, I'll miss his harem scarum noise and look in vain for scattered toys. And I'll be sad. Everybody has bad days. Do you ever feel that you're walking through life alone, burdened down with care, and nobody cares? Listen to this poem, Nobody Walks Alone. Oft times when the highway of life seems rough and all of your dreams have flown, just remember wherever your road may go, Nobody walks alone. When everyone else has let you down and under your sins you groan, just keep reminding your burdened heart, nobody walks alone. Then suddenly you'll feel God's hand in yours and his eyes uplifting your own. And you'll hear his gentle forgiving voice say, Nobody walks alone. Here's a little poem that brought in a lot of mail. A lot of people seem to like another day. Each morning when I wake, I say, thank you, God, for another day. A ray of sun, a drop of rain, a chance to do your work again. For night is filled with fancied fears, and sleep, the welcome when it nears, pervades my soul with vague unrest. Tomorrow seems a vanished quest. And then I wake with morning light, and all the gloomy cares of night like thistledown are blown away by his great gift, another day. We all love our mothers. So here's a little thought for Mother's Day. Flowers for Mother. Flowers for Mother. Go gather a garland, sweet white carnations and roses so red. Wear them with love, for without it no tribute is worth a gray hair on her blessed old head. Flowers for Mother. The world may divide you. In a cold cell you may lie in disgrace. Mother in spirit is standing beside you, lifting the gloom with a smile on her face. Flowers for mother. Today they are heaping honors and praises on mothers of men. Flowers for mother. Perhaps she is sleeping sleeping and dreaming she's with us again as i walk to work each morning i pass a small city park and I often see an old man there, sharing his crust of bread with the pigeons. And that's what inspired this poem, Pigeons. He feeds the pigeons every day. I see him standing there with crumbs for all his hungry brood, although his clothes are bare. They seem to know he is their friend, 
those weary urchin birds. He speaks to them and they talk back in funny feathered words. And when at last they've had their fill, they soar up to the skies. And how he wishes he had wings. I see it in his eyes. There's a wonderful refuge when things go wrong for you in this world. You can find it in the title of this poem, God's Hands. When things go wrong and you can't go on and nobody understands, drop into your church or synagogue and put yourself in God's hands. Just tell him all of your cares and woes. He'll listen to every one and he'll blow them away like thistle down before your prayers are done. So when life clamps down, as it often does, on your spirit with iron bands, go seek the Father as children do and put yourself in his hands.